I was about five years old and I was coming out of Hesselbart's cornfield and there was a little red arrowhead there and I picked it up and you pick up an arrowhead, all of a sudden you have questions about it. I mean, whose arrowhead was it? Every artifact is unique. You know that someone lost that artifact. Someone laid that artifact down. A human hand made it and a human hand left it. And now you're the first human to pick it up in possibly thousands of years. With the Clovis points, I was the first one to pick those up in 13,000 years. That makes things just seem so much more special when you know the age and the time difference between when they were here in Bodkins and now when I am here in Bodkins. I became obsessed when I moved to Bodkins and every field I went into, I found an arrowhead. Every field I went into. And I was keeping track. And 72 straight times I went into fields and would pick up artifacts. I would get permission. Farmers would often tell me, you're not going to find anything here. I've lived here for 50 years. My parents were here for 50 before that. No one's ever found an arrowhead. I'd walk in, pick up an arrowhead. And there were times when I got crazy because I started to think that I was being guided by some kind of a spirit because it seemed like wherever I went, I was finding arrowheads. And I would, I would get feelings like I, I was driving down Lock 2 Road and all of a sudden I, there's, there's an arrowhead out here in this field. I got to go. I stopped the car, you know, just put it in park walked out into the field and, and found about a three and a half inch blade and, and walked back. And that's, that's when I got, started getting crazy and started thinking, oh, this is real, this is real. But you know, once you get skunked a few times and you realize that spirit's gone. <laughs> My wife in about 71 was doing an exam for me and it was probably in May. She needed duplicating paper. And I said, look, I'm gonna go to the school and get some duplicating paper. And she said to me, don't you dare look for arrowheads because it had just rained. But this was a real storm. And when there's a real storm, you know something's been washed off. So I lied to her. I left, went straight down to the field, took three steps into the field. And I mean, it was muddy. There was water everywhere. And in that water, I saw a glint of flint. It was under the water. I reached down and as I picked it up, my forefinger and thumb rested on the flute on each side of that point. And I knew instantly what it was. I didn't even have to look at it. I knew what it was. I had never had a fluted point, but I knew what a fluted point was. I drove back to the school real fast, washed off my shoes in the uh, boys restroom sink, uh, washed off the arrowhead, stuck it in my pocket, put my shoes back on. Went to the teacher's lounge, got the masters, came back as if nothing had happened. And never said a word to her about what I had found. But I knew from that point on I'd really have to start looking hard because I was hoping. And then, it wasn't about a few weeks later, I found another Clovis point, a blue one. I taught Ohio history. I had diagnostic artifacts for every cultural period, for every time period as well. And uh, the janitor had said that he was going to paint the room and he wanted me to move my stuff out. And I said, well, look, you call me when you want me to bring my stuff and, and, and move my stuff out of the room. Just give me a call and I'll be over. Well, I had forgotten all about it. A week before school started in August, I walked into the room and, yep, it had been repainted. It looked great. I looked around. I didn't see my stack of artifacts. I ran out in the hall and I saw Ron Market at the end of the hall. And I said, hey, Ron, somebody broke into the school this summer and stole the artifacts that were in my room. And he laughed and he said, Milky, nobody broke into the school this summer and stole your artifacts. And I, I said, what do you mean? They're not here. Where are they? I can't find them. He said, we threw them away. And of course, at that point, I'm pretty agitated. And he comes up to the room. I says, what, what are you talking about? He said, Clarence said, he called you, told you to come over and clean that stuff out so we could paint. And you didn't come over. So he said, just throw them into the dumpster and get rid of them. And I said, Ron, Clarence never called me. 
I never got a call. I would have been over here in a heartbeat. At that moment, I was so angry. If Clarence Bear had been there, I would have tried to kill him. I mean, he would have defended himself, and I, he, I wouldn't have been able to kill him, but I would have tried. But I would have been fired. I would have definitely lost my job. So oh, I cooled down a little bit, and I realized, I'm thinking, man, I got to get out in the fields. I got I got I got some walking to do. I've got a lot of walking to do. And I pull my boots on, and I can't tie them up. It hit me all at once. Every single artifact that they had thrown away was unique. None of them could be replaced. They're gone forever. And I was done. In the summer of 1982, I was finished hunting for arrowheads. Artifacts took my life for I don't know how many years. And then since 1990, fossils totally dominated. That's 30 years, 30 years, man. It wasn't just but a couple years ago that I saw a presentation by Met and Aaron. And I told him, I said, I, I think I've got something that you'll be interested in. He told me later, he said, I have people tell me all the time, I've got some stuff you'll really be interested in. But when I saw your stuff, I had to have it. So I donated it to the Cleveland Museum of Natural History because that's where it's deposited and then anybody else can look at it as well. But Met and Aaron uh, did the work with several other archeologists uh, on the site. Then I get this publication. I open this up and I look at all the Clovis sites in the state of Ohio, okay? And there's a red star there. And by that red star, there's one word and that word says milky. And that, I don't know, it just, that's when what Metten had said about I was going to be a part of science. That's when it hit me that I was. Remember, I hadn't looked for arrowheads since 1982. But when this publication comes out with the Clovis site report, all of a sudden I wanted to find more, okay? I wanted to find another Clovis site because this is the only one in West Central, Western Ohio, period. I think that's the connection uh, that I have, is just trying to answer questions that people have about those that, that came before us. And it's, I think we're all curious, you know, we all want to know who they were. Even though they're gone, what they left behind is extremely important for us to at least get a feel and an understanding for what they did when they were here.